Should we keep tax loopholes for oil companies? Or should we use that money to give small business owners a tax credit when they hire new workers? Because we can't afford to do both. Should we keep tax breaks for millionaires and billionaires? Or should we put teachers back to work so our kids can graduate ready for college and good jobs? Right now, we can't afford to do both. This isn't political grandstanding. This isn't class warfare. This is simple math. This is simple math. These are real choices. These are real choices that we've got to make. And I'm pretty sure I know what most Americans would choose. It's Not even close. And it's time for us to do what's right for our future. Now, the American Jobs Act answers the urgent need to create jobs right away. But we can't stop there. As I've argued since I ran for this office, we have to look beyond the immediate. crisis and start building an economy that lasts into the future an economy that creates good. Middle class jobs that pay well and offer security. We now live in a world where technology has made it possible for companies to take their business anywhere. If we want them to start here and stay here and hire here. We have to be able to outbuild and out educate and out innovate every other country on earth. And this task of making America more competitive for the long haul, that's a job for all of us. for government and for private companies. For states and for local communities and for every American citizen.
all of us will have to up our game. All of us will have to change the way we do business. My administration can and will take some steps to improve our competitiveness on our own. For example, if you're a small business owner who has a contract with the federal government. We're going to make sure you get paid a lot faster than you do right now. We're also planning to cut away the red tape that prevents too many. Rapidly growing startup companies from raising capital and going public. And to help responsible homeowners, we're going to work with federal housing agencies too. Help more people refinance their mortgages at interest rates that are now near 4%. That's a step I know you guys must be for this, because that's a step that can put more than $2,000 a year in a family's pocket. And give a lift to an economy still burdened by the drop in housing prices. So, some things we can do on our own. Other steps will require congressional action. Today you passed reform that will speed up the outdated patent process, so that entrepreneurs can turn a new idea. into a new business as quickly as possible. That's the kind of action we need. Now it's time to clear the way. For a series of trade agreements that would make it easier for American companies to sell their products in Panama, and Colombia and South Korea while also helping the workers whose jobs have been affected by global competition. If Americans can buy Kias and Hyundais, I want to see folks in South Korea driving. Fords and Chevys and Chryslers.
I want to see more products sold around the world stamped with the three proud words. Made in America. That's what we need to get done. And on all of our efforts to strengthen competitiveness. We need to look for ways to work side by side with America's businesses. That's why I've brought together a jobs council of leaders from different industries. Who are developing a wide range of new ideas to help companies grow and create jobs. Already, we've mobilized business leaders to train 10,000 American engineers a year. By providing company internships and training. Other businesses are covering tuition for workers who learn new skills at community colleges. And we're going to make sure the next generation of manufacturing takes root not in China or Europe. but right here, in the United States of America. If we provide the right incentives, the right support and if we make sure our Trading partners play by the rules we can be the ones to build everything from fuel efficient. Cars to advanced biofuels to semiconductors that we sell all around the world. That's how America can be number one again. And that's how America will be number one again. Now, I realize that some of you have a different theory on how to grow the economy. Some of you sincerely believe that the only solution to our economic challenges is to simply cut most government spending and eliminate most government regulations. Well, I agree that we can't afford wasteful spending, and I'll work with you, with Congress, to root it out.
and I agree that there are some rules and regulations that do put an unnecessary burden on businesses at a time when they can least afford it. That's why I ordered a review of all government regulations. So far, we've identified over 500 reforms, which will save billions of dollars over the next few years. We should have no more regulation than the health, safety, and security of the American people require. Every rule should meet that common sense test. But what we can't do what I will not do is let this economic crisis be used as an excuse to wipe out the basic protections that Americans have counted on for decades. I reject the idea that we need to ask people to choose between their jobs and their safety. I reject the argument that says for the economy to grow. We have to roll back protections that ban hidden fees by credit card companies, or rules that keep our kids from being exposed to mercury. Or laws that prevent the health insurance industry from shortchanging patients. I reject the idea that we have to strip away collective bargaining rights to compete in a global economy. We shouldn't be in a race to the bottom. where we try to offer the cheapest labor and the worst pollution standards. America should be in a race to the top. And I believe we can win that race. In fact, this larger notion that the only thing we can do to restore prosperity is just dismantle government. Refund everybody's money, and let everyone write their own rules. and tell everyone they're on their own that's not who we are. That's not the story of America.
Yes, we are rugged individualists. Yes, we are strong and self-reliant. And it has been the drive and initiative of our workers and entrepreneurs. That has made this economy the engine and the envy of the world. But there's always been another thread running throughout our history of belief that we're all connected. And that there are some things we can only do together, as a nation. We all remember Abraham Lincoln as the leader who saved our union. Founder of the Republican Party. But in the middle of a civil war. He was also a leader who looked to the future a Republican president who mobilized government to build the transcontinental. Railroad launched the National Academy of Sciences, set up the first land-grant colleges. And leaders of both parties have followed the example he set. Ask yourselves where would we be right now if the people who sat here before us decided not to build our highways. Not to build our bridges, our dams, our airports. What would this country be like if we had chosen not to spend money on public high schools? Or research universities, or community colleges? Millions of returning heroes, including my grandfather, had the opportunity to go to school because of the G. I. Bill. Where would we be if they hadn't had that chance? How many jobs would it have cost us if past Congresses decided not to? Support the basic research that led to the internet and the computer chip? What kind of country would this be if this chamber had voted down social security or
Medicare just because it violated some rigid idea about what government could or could not do. How many Americans would have suffered as a result? No single individual built America on their own. We built it together. We have been, and always will be, one nation, under God, indivisible. With liberty and justice for all, a nation with responsibilities to ourselves and with responsibilities to one another. And members of Congress, it is time for us to meet our responsibilities. Every proposal I've laid out tonight is the kind that's been supported by Democrats. And Republicans in the past. Every proposal I've laid out tonight will be paid for. And every proposal is designed to meet the urgent needs of our people and our communities. Now, I know there's been a lot of skepticism about whether the politics of the moment will allow us to pass this jobs plan or any jobs plan. Already, we're seeing the same old press releases and tweets flying back and forth. Already, the media has proclaimed that it's impossible to bridge our differences. And maybe some of you have decided that those differences are so great that we can only resolve them at the ballot box. But know this, the next election is 14 months away. And the people who sent us here, the people who hired us to work for them, they don't have the luxury of waiting 14 months. Some of them are living week to week, paycheck to paycheck even day to day. They need help, and they need it now.